Welcome to Noir Alley. I'm your host, Eddie Muller, and today I bring you the kind of story which ought not to be made because it is a story of gross lust and shocking brutality and ruthlessness. Well, that sounds pretty good to me, but I'm quoting Joseph Breen, Hollywood's chief censor at the time today's film, Born to Kill, was submitted to his office for approval. Honestly, I have no idea how this film got past the production code office in 1947. RKO agreed to cut a few of the more violent passages, but the overall tone of this film and the motivations of its main characters, well, they're as depraved as anything made in Hollywood. What makes it even more confounding is that the film is directed by one of the sweetest guys in the business, Robert Wise who with this picture graduated from the B unit at RKO to A picture status. And the source material is this overheated little pot boiler called Deadlier Than the Male, a title that was entirely appropriate and should have stayed on the film. Now, Claire Trevor had played her share of femme fatales by this time, but none could hold a candle to Helen Brent, the viper she portrays here. And this isn't your garden variety vixen a wily woman who uses sex appeal to get what she wants, this is a much darker and disturbing character, an otherwise respectable woman who's sexually aroused by cruelty and pain. Now, for a man who's just returned from his honeymoon with an attractive wife, you're very ardent. Like I said, it's astounding that this film got made. Now, there are folks who believe a movie's not truly noir unless there's a femme fatale. Well, how about a movie with a femme fatale and a homme fatale? Then it's like Clash of the Titans. Trevor's co-star, Lawrence Tierney, had scored a wholly unexpected breakthrough portraying the title character in Dillinger, a cheaply made B from the notorious King Brothers that became one of the biggest box office successes of 1945. The public relished Tierney's mean and malevolent screen persona, which honestly makes Richard Widmark's giddy psychopath seem cute in comparison. Born to Kill was the actor's big shot at stardom, and in the wake of Dillinger's success, RKO put a lot of money and talent into this film, tailoring the whole project to exploit the actor's dangerous sex appeal. I can have anything I want, Maude, anything at all, if I put my mind to it. Sure, Sam, sure. And when I want it, I take it, and nobody cuts in. On the posters, he looked like Tyrone Power's badass black sheep brother. On screen, Tierney never seemed to be acting. He seemed like a guy who could erupt into violence at any moment, which is precisely how he spent his free time. Despite attempts to groom him as a leading man, nothing and no one could control the actor's propensity for drunken brawling and outrageously antisocial behavior. Before the end of the 1940s, Tierney had built a rap sheet twice as long as his resume. His brother Scott, who sounded exactly like him and was even more handsome, ended up getting steadier work and changing his last name to Brady to avoid any confusion with his notorious sibling. Now, I can't say Lawrence Tierney blew his big chance because somehow he went on to have a long career one that extended into the 1990s with films like Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs, where he played the gang's leader, Joe Cabot. Now, I shared a memorable experience with the man one night in Hollywood when he showed up at a screening I was hosting of, you guessed it, Born to Kill. Now, most of what transpired that evening can't be related on a family-friendly network. But let me just give you a sense of the man. I asked him if he had any wisdom to share about navigating the kind of tumultuous life he led. He looked me square in the eye and said, yeah, never get in a fight with a guy who knows how to handle a knife. Folks, Claire Trevor gives a great performance in this morning's film, but Lawrence Tierney, he is not acting. Enjoy Born to Kill.